Space, the final frontier. This is the Observer's Notebook, the official podcast of the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers. Its mission to explore the solar system, to seek out new observations and data, to boldly go where no podcast has gone before. And now the host of the Observer's Notebook, Tim Robertson. Welcome to episode 175 of the Observer's Notebook, the official podcast of the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers. My name is Tim Robertson. I'm the host of the Observer's Notebook and also the coordinator of the training program within the ALPO. Thanks for downloading and listening. The ALPO collects and analyzes observations of various solar system bodies and associated phenomenon and publishes detailed reports concerning these bodies in its quarterly publication, The Journal of the Association of Lunar and Planetary Observers. This podcast depends upon donations from you, our listeners, to keep it going. If you enjoy what you hear in the podcast, you can donate to it via Patreon. You can start by giving as little as $1 a month. If you feel even more generous, for $5, you receive early access to the podcast before it goes public. For a monthly donation of $10, you receive a copy of the Novice Observer's Handbook. And for $35 a month, you receive producer credits on the podcast. You can find out more by going to www. That Patreon, that's P A T R E O N dot com slash observers notebook. And if you'd like to join the ALPL, membership begins at only $22 a year. You can find out more at www.alpo astronomy.org. And you can also find us on the Facebook. Just search for ALPO Astronomy. And this podcast also has a Facebook page as well. Just search for Observers Notebook. And if you enjoy what you hear and don't want to miss another episode, please subscribe. And now, Episode 175, and we're talking the ring planet Saturn. And its rings are starting to disappear. Find out why in this episode. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody back to this edition of the Observer's Notebook podcast. And today we're talking about the planet Saturn. And that must mean we're talking to Julius Benton. Welcome back to the podcast, Julius. Yes, good to be back. Yeah. Um, so before we get into talking about what Saturn's doing right now, what it looks like, why don't you just give us a little brief overview of the Saturn section? Okay, the Saturn section has uh, about uh, 70 members and uh, about... That equal number of those uh, worldwide uh, that uh, contribute observations and images and that sort of thing. Some people still draw Saturn and use mm -hmm. our blanks, and also they send me the images. Okay. So uh, what percentage of them are images and as opposed to actual drawings? I would say images about 80%, drawings okay. about 20%. So it's about 80-20 uh, mix. Okay. And the, the instrumentation that these people use, what, what, what types of telescopes? Well, the most Schmidt cast and also refractors, uh, a few new, a few Newtonians, and um, they range in size from uh, uh, six inches, uh, fifteen point uh, two centimeters, up to uh, as large as uh, sixteen inches. Oh my! Oh my! So, who are who are your, some of your more active contributors? Let's give them a shout out. Well, you got Trevor. Trevor Barry, Barry in Australia and uh -huh. uh, Clyde Foster in um, in uh, Namibia. And mm -hmm. also uh, we've got observers in uh, Italy and Japan and elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so I'm, And we've got quite a few observers here in the United States. We've got Christopher Go in the Philippines and mm -hmm. uh, quite a number of people uh, that still send in observations from the U.S. and also from Canada. Great. Now let's go back in time. What did we see in the last apparition of Saturn that that was new or different or interesting that you had? Well, there's been quite a bit of activity on in the southern hemisphere. It's easy to see part of the southern hemisphere now with the ring tilt uh, at about uh, uh, eight degrees right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's plus eight degrees. Uh, the, the tilt is eight point nine degrees right now, to be specific. That was at opposition on uh, August the twenty seventh. Right, and then of course uh, the rings are kind of closing up until we have the next Edgewise presentation in twenty twenty four. Wow, so so what kind of observations are you looking for right now? Images and those who wish to make drawings and make intensity estimates, that sort of thing. But 
just following up with Saturn after uh, opposition. And of course, observers can still send in any observations they made throughout the observing period. Uh, mm -hmm. Saturn's previous conjunction was in February uh, of 2023. And of course, uh, on February 16th, and then uh, it goes into conjunction again on February 28th of this next year. So uh, we've got still a good bit left of the opposite of, of the apparition right now, which is really good. Yeah, as you mentioned, the, the ring tilt is you know 8.9 8 degrees, so they're almost edge on. And so we're getting a really good view of the entire globe of the planet. Reasonably well, yes. The northern hemisphere is uh, the most obvious po portion of the globe, but now mm -hmm. as the rings are tilting more and more uh, to or becoming more and more toward moving more towards the Edgewise presentation. Then, of course, uh, more and more the southern hemisphere is visible. Most of the belts, belts and zones in that region. People are reporting activity in the South a Equatorial Belt and also in the northern uh, hemisphere as well. White spots and also dark spots. That that, that was leading to my next question too. What what is happening on Saturn that observers should be looking for in what areas and that types of things? Well, of course, keep an eye on all the activity that's been occurring in the northern hemisphere in the uh, equator in the equatorial zone and equatorial belt and also uh, regions further north of that and also just where the rings cross the globe uh, some of the areas in the southern hemisphere of Saturn are starting to show show uh, white spots that we're really trying to keep track of and interesting thing about it is is that with this ring tilt, some of the Saturns, some of the satellites are also transiting the globe, which is really quite interesting. Oh, that's now. Are you interested in receiving those types of observations as well? Oh, absolutely. Good timings would be very helpful. And people have taken photographs uh, or, or taken images uh, or made images of the uh, satellites as well. I've got several images where people have sent me uh, some detailed images showing the satellites, uh, Enceladus, and also uh, Titan as well as some of the other satellites in their images that they've sent, and they've labeled them, which has really been helpful. Wow. Now, you mentioned the white spots on Saturn that are that are appearing. Are, are there other features that we should be on the lookout for? Yes. Uh, there's a white streak, in it, a curious white streak in the, equi in the equatorial belt of Saturn. And uh, then, of course, uh, as uh, the as the ring con rings continue to tilt away from uh the, the location that they're in right now, uh, as they, as you see more and more the southern hemisphere, people need to start continue imaging the uh, southern hemisphere to pick up those uh, white spots that are appearing in the uh, south equatorial belt. Okay, now the the white spots uh, that's not something new; those have been there for a while, right? They've been recurring from uh, most of this apparition, and we've had several people confirming those uh, simultaneous observations that have showed uh, shown. Uh, uh, confirming data showing that those spots are still there in, the, in those particular zones. Well, what is the cause of those? Do you know? It's the upwelling of uh, pneumonia from the uh, lower part of the atmosphere, yeah. and uh, they show up as white spots uh, against the background. Okay. Very good. And some, and some observers have picked up the white spots that look like they're lined up across the globe um, and they kind of merge together. It makes it look like a white streak across the zone, uh, across, across the uh, South Equatorial Belt. Pretty interesting. That's, that is. Yeah. Um, now, do many of these features reoccur every year or periodically? Well, people have been following these uh, some of these spots in the uh, northern hemisphere in the uh, North Equatorial Belt and also uh, further north of that up near the... Uh, up near the uh, polar region of Saturn, um, some of the spots have been recurring, and uh, observers have been tracking those and making uh, pretty good drift charts, so we can see how this is occurring now. These recurring spots are nice to be following. Okay, so the the, the type of observ, let's say uh, uh, images that you're looking for, you really want, you know, images sent in very systematically i mean where 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 an observer is actually looking daily or you know every couple of days we're going to clear skies to actually see the changes happening real time on the planet yes the interesting thing is is that we've asked observers to send in their observations as soon as they make them i i get i get probably 30 or 40 observations every other day from observers worldwide wow 
and most of the images are made with uh, in, in integrated light, which is with no filter. And then some of the images with uh, the RGB filters, uh, as well as uh, infrared wavelengths, bring out some of the details that uh, observers are using filters to help uh, show better contrast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay, talk about filters now. Obviously, color filters are important for visual observing as well. Yes. And yes, what, 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 would you, what would you recommend? What color filters would you recommend for visual observing of Saturn? Well, orange, an orange filter on Saturn and also a magenta filter helps bring out some details as well as a variable density polarizer really helps uh, bring out the details that uh, may not be quite as obvious to the naked eye. Okay. And uh, now the nice thing about the Saturn section is your observing forms actually... Uh, have the rings on them, and you have ones for different ring angles, correct? Yes, uh, they're available on our website. And uh, if somebody needs to have their forms, I can send it to them uh, via my email. I, I can send them copies of them. Okay, well, they can I'll, download them and print them out and use them. Yeah, I'll put a link to uh, the ALPL website where the observing forms are located in the show notes. So if anybody wants to find them that way, they, it's, it's pretty easy. As yes, well. uh, now, right you, now we're using the. Uh, Ring tilt of approximately eight, between eight and 10 degrees right now, positive okay. Uh, north. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now, your observing reports that you publish in the journal, they're, they're quite extensive. Well, when you consider that I've got over 1,300 individual images so far this observing season, it's crazy. Uh, it does allow for some good choices of observations to show our images to feature in the observing reports and track down all the data, just keeping track of all the activity that's occurring on Saturn. Yeah, it, it's interesting because I like to do these these uh, section uh, podcasts when the planet reaches opposition. It was at that point, you know, as the sun sets, the planet's coming up. But there are a lot of observers up there that are looking at this planet, you know, all night long. Well, the interesting thing is, too, even though the opposition occurred on August 27th, it's still fairly well placed in the sky for mm -hmm. northern hemisphere observers. And those in the southern hemisphere have a good view of Saturn. It's, it's a declination of minus 11.8 degrees. So the guys in Australia will be able to send me some observations, you know, throughout the year. Very good. Very good. Now, what kind of science are we getting from these observations? Well, we're tracking uh, the recurring spots on Saturn, and uh, we share that information with the Pro-Am group, and uh, we have a good rapport with those folks in the professional community, and they keep soliciting these observations and just tracking Saturn ever since the Cassini mission was occurring on Saturn that ended back in September. So I've seen. Yeah, and, and that's very important for people to realize that the, the work that we do in the ALPO, we're not just a bunch of amateur astronomers. Our work is actually used by the professionals and NASA to, to for their space programs and also for their papers they, that they publish. Yes, the thing about it is, is that when you have a whole team of observers making images, it's good to compare those images with some of the ones that have been taken by, taken by spacecraft. And uh, good comparative data is really helpful because... Uh, when you've got quite a number of images that are showing the same features, uh, it's easy to confirm that those uh, those features that we're seeing on Saturn aren't just uh, sporadic. They, yeah. they continue to recur, which is really important. Yeah, it's very important. And for those listeners that aren't astrophotographers, the drawings are very important as well. I mean, you mentioned those and the observing forms make it that much easier. And, you know, I, I run the training program with the Alpo and Saturn, you know, the, I, I'm shocked that sometimes some of the details some of my students come up with when they're observing Saturn. So it's, 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 it's still valuable to do visual observations. Yes, very much so. And uh, on the forms, there is a place to do the visual numerical relative intensity estimates, mm -hmm. relative, comparing the uh, brightness of the uh, various belts and zones, as as well as the ring components. Very true. Very true. And another interesting point is that some observers have actually sent in images of the ring spokes in Ring B. Really? At, at, at this at this uh, tilt level? Yes. Wow. That's I did not know that. That's interesting. Well, the I, way that the rings are tilted right now, it's, it's it, it it sort of stands out against the background, which is really okay. kind of kind of interesting. There was an article in Sky and Telescope that was talking about the uh, 
visibility of the uh, ring spokes. It goes back when uh, Stephen O'Meara and the others have uh, first started pointing those out before, uh, you know, the space missions occurred, before mm -hmm. uh, Voyager and also the Cassini mission. Now, all of your observations that you receive, you publish them in a in a um, in a in a uh, report, and those are just do they get published? They only get published in the Journal of the Association of Lunar Planetary Observers, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, you're author also an author of a book on Saturn, aren't you? Yes, Saturn and how to observe it. It was done back in 2005, and of course, we're going to work on a follow up edition pretty soon with a new publisher. Oh, fantastic! So where is that available? It's on it's Amazon. Okay. And right. most of the information in there about observing techniques has not really changed that much. Right. Now you'll probably expand on on some um imaging techniques and things in the in the future, but not Yes. Not right away. Okay, very good. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, observers just continue to follow Saturn and after uh, before a conjunction occurs, it's going to be pretty low in the sky, of course, by the time February rolls around. Mm -hmm. Being in conjunction with the sun on February the 28th, and then following then into March and April, as Saturn comes around the sun again, we'll be able to see uh, Saturn again and follow it the next apparition of 24, 25. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. All right, Julius. Well, this has been very educational. I want to thank you for coming on the podcast again. All right, great. Thank you. Good to be here. All right. Well, that'll do it for this episode of The Observer's Notebook. I again want to thank Julius Benton and coming on to talk about the planet Saturn. Get out there and observe. Help us out. We upload new episodes of The Observer's Notebook on the 1st and 15th of every month. You can subscribe to us on iTunes. If you do, please give us a rating and review us. I would really appreciate that. You can also listen to us on Apple Radio, iHeart Radio, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Google Play, Stitcher, Amazon Echo, Spotify, and we're also on our ALPO YouTube channel. You can help support the podcast by donating to it via Patreon. You can give up to $35 a month, where you will receive one year's membership to the Oppo and producer credits on the podcast. And with that, I'd like to thank the producers of this podcast, Steve Seedentop and Michael Moyer, for their generous support. The link for Patreon, as well as the link for the Oppo, is in the show notes. If you'd like to get a hold of me, my email address is cometman at cometman.net or on Twitter at, at ObserversNBPod. And until next time, my hope is you always have clear and steady skies. Thanks for listening.